A large part of Michigan's reinvention hinges on employment, and it's no mystery we rely on our diverse network of schools, colleges, and universities to educate and develop Michigan's workforce, and ideally retain their talent for years to come. A governor's summit on agriculture was held in 2011, where the industry identified five goals to reach by 2015, including increasing our economic impact from $90 billion up to $100 billion, and increasing food and agricultural jobs 10 percent. With those goals in mind, it's crucial for students desiring to work in the food and agriculture industry to gain the skills and experience needed through career and technical education courses and programs such as 4-H and FFA to fulfill jobs as they become available. The current Michigan Merit Curriculum graduation requirements severely limit the ability for students to enroll in career and technical education classes where students experience hands-on learning and acquire skills valuable in exposing them to the variety of agriculture careers available. I was tied for valedictorian with another young man who's a friend of mine and we've been competing neck and neck ever since middle school to see who could get the better grades and it's always been really important to me because my mom graduated valedictorian of her high school. Come to my junior year I had the opportunity to come to the Tech Center and be an FFA which agriculture has always been like a passion of mine I've always wanted to be an FFA and after talking to my counselor, I found out that since we were tied for valedictorian, we have a weighted GPA system at my school, that he would take more weighted classes than I would because tech center classes aren't considered to be weighted. And then I would lose out on being valedictorian because we don't average our ACT into it. So I finally made the decision to come to tech center. And since he's taking college classes, he's got more weighted classes than I do. But I believe I got more out of the FFA and I think it's helpful. Recognizing a need for these education reforms, State Representatives Ed McBroom and Joel Johnson introduced House Bills 4465 and 4466 in March to increase flexibility within the Michigan Merit Curriculum requirements to provide increased opportunities for students to enroll in career and technical training programs. Michigan Farm Bureau policy clearly supports the legislation, as do other organizations, such as the Associated Builders and Contractors, Michigan Manufacturers Association, and National Federation of Independent Businesses. There's a lot of different reasons you can look at whether it's in input from students and parents and schools or employers around the state are saying something's really changed in Michigan, and the merit curriculum is what changed. And it is changing the whole dynamic of who graduates from high school and where they're headed to in their future. And we've basically created a curriculum now that one tracks, it's one cookie cutter size fits all idea. And most of the students find that is a career path that leads on to four year institution, not to something that leads to a certification or technical training or a career in some sort of vocational art. And so these changes are really necessary so that we can have a job force uh, a, a large across the horizon graduation of students who have all the different interests of the different careers that are available in our local communities available to them. The proposed changes would allow a career and technical education course to meet the merit curriculum requirements in the area of Algebra 2. Likewise, agri-science or anatomy could fulfill the physics or chemistry credit within the science requirement. The legislation also clarifies the ability to pursue a personalized curriculum developed by the student, parents, teacher, and school district to meet a student's specific needs. I think what makes career and technical education valuable is the problem-solving skills that students learn from being in, in the curriculum when they apply the math knowledge, when they apply the, the science knowledge. And so we can have that knowledge, but what CTE does better than any other curriculum out there is provide the problem-solving skills that students need in the real world. There's a place for academics and there's a place for career and technical education. We've got to find it. And then once we find it, we need to strengthen it because CTE, I mean, not every student is going to go to college. And that's okay. I mean, it's not that we're saying, well, you're not going to go to college. It's okay that every student doesn't go to college. There are jobs out there for people that don't go to college and decent paying jobs. But we cannot cookie cutter our students. Not every student is the same. And so we have to give them options and career and technical education offers the options that our students need and will thrive on if we, let, if we give them some choices. 
career and technical education teaches students how to make quick, calculated decisions, rapidly adapt to a changing environment, and critical thinking skills that can be applied in many life situations. In addition, employers prize the time management and attention to detail that CTE programs instill in students. This is a way to stop the bleeding from our local student population going out and finding jobs that aren't in our areas when our areas are still very much involved with either agriculture or manufacturing or high-tech industries that don't necessarily require a four-year degree. There's still a place for that. We want students who want that to seek that. But the student who wants to not seek that but wants to go directly into a training course and go into the works field, we want that to be available too.